Jay Haynes for the Film Sensei YouTube channel. About six years ago, I saw this video on the Tri-M23 YouTube channel with a note that said, Nothing spectacular here, just a test to try creating a procedural landscape for HUD-type displays. I thought it was pretty cool, and so I'm going to show you how to make this in the free version of HitFilm, HitFilm Express, with no other add-ons and no other assets. Before we begin, I would encourage you to go take a look at the Trium23 YouTube channel, as well as Mike Miller's other channel, which is HitFilm University. I will leave links to both of those channels in the description below. So I'm going to start by creating a new plane, and this plane will be the basis for the looping fractal noise effect, as well as the grid that I will be creating also. Instead of being 1920 by 1080, I'm actually going to double the height of this to 2160 and then click OK. And now I will drag that into a composite shot. I'm going to start by making the grid first. So this will be super simple. I'm going to rename this composite shot Base Grid and then I will search for and find the grid effect and drop that onto the new plane. Now, I just want to do a little bit of cleanup work here. So maybe I will take this down to something like negative 30. Um, and I probably will just do a few more adjustments here. A few moments later. All right, and that looks pretty good. I think what I will do now is go ahead and create the looping grid effect. So what I will do is create a new composite shot, and I will call this looping grid. And it will be a normal 1920 by 1080. And click OK. So now if I bring in my base grid, you can see it's basically set right here in the center. And then what I will do is I will just go ahead and duplicate this and I will, you can back this way out, you can see it's right there and I will go ahead and move this up by 2160 so that that is sitting right above the other one. And then all I need to do is create a new point and I will parent both of those to the new point and then with the new point I will go ahead and create a keyframe under the position and, oh, you know what? I want to actually make this only 10 seconds long, not 30 seconds. 30 seconds would be a long time to loop. So let's just go ahead and go 10 second loop. Yes. And now if I go to the end of the timeline over here, I can go ahead and change this to negative 2160. So basically what is happening is it is just coming down here. But you'll notice at the beginning and the end, look exactly the same, right? So it essentially can be looping. And if I go ahead and recenter it, you can see, let me turn on looping. And then, so when it gets to the end and then it starts over again. Yeah, look at that. Okay. And you can see that in the middle is a little bit skewed there, but it's not so terrible that I'm going to worry about it. So I think we're fine. All right. So now that I have a looping grid effect, I'm going to do the exact same thing, but I'm going to create a looping fractal noise effect. So again, I'm going to start with my plane and I will just drag this into a new composite shot and I will rename this composite shot base fractal. And I will go ahead and add a fractal noise effect to that plane. Now I will go ahead and create a new composite shot and I will call this looping fractal and again I want it to only be 10 seconds long and click OK oh but this time I want that to be again just like the other one 1920 by 1080 so let me fix that there we go now let's go ahead and bring in the base fractal so there it is and then just like before I'm going to right click and duplicate and then I will open up the transform properties and move this up 2160 pixels so that one is sitting right on top of the other and then i will go ahead and add a new point layer 
parenting both of the planes to that new point, and then the new point I will go ahead and keyframe the position to go from zero all the way down to negative 2160. So it goes down this way. And again, you can see if I refit to frame that the end of this looks exactly like the beginning. Okay. However, in the middle, we do have the seam here. So we're just going to have to fix that. And the way that I will end up doing that is I will just go ahead and bring in one more brace fractal. And let me see, this is it set at five. So I will go ahead and parent that to the new point. So it moves as well. And then if I use my uh, handy dandy rectangular mask tool, I can go ahead and mask that fractal. And so now I have two seams, but here's the beauty of it is that I can go ahead and open up the properties of the mask and just feather that really heavily. Okay. So now you can see that it is looping. And again, if when it gets to the end, it just starts over again. All right. So now that I've made a looping fractal and I've made a looping grid, it's time to go ahead and make the final effect. So opening up the media bin, I will create a new composite shot again, 1920 by 1080. And I will call this final clicking. Okay. I will go ahead and bring in my looping fractal first and hide it because it doesn't need to be visible for the effect that we're going to use it for. Now let me bring in the looping grid. And what I want to do is select this icon, layer dimensions, and make it a three-dimensional plane. This will automatically add a camera. If it does not, it will ask you if you want a camera added and you would say yes. From here, I'm going to open up the properties of the looping grid and rotate the X axis by 90 degrees. And now if I open up the camera, I will go ahead and just sort of position this camera, maybe bring it up a bit, maybe rotate it forward somewhat, and then bring it towards this. Maybe come down a little bit more. Something like that. What do you think? Okay. Now to make this look a little nicer, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the floor planes by clicking that icon. And also I'm going to, under options, turn off the checkerboard background. So now you can see that we have this thing looping. And when it gets to the end, then it resets and starts looping again. All right. Now search for the parallax effect and drag it onto the looping grid and then source the fractal, the looping fractal. And now you can see that we have basically a nice little undulations here within this, okay? Now I can adjust these, but I don't wanna do that too much because it sort of removes things that are in the back. And also if I go too far, then it'll remove almost everything. So I'm gonna leave this at 50. And instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into the base fractal and I'm going to adjust some of the fractal noise features here. To do this, I will go ahead and under the controls tab, here's where the fractal noise settings are. I'm going to select this lock selection pin. I'm just going to click on that. Now that this has been locked into the control panel, I can go back to the final composite shot but still have this available to mess around with so opening up the transform properties of the fractal noise not of the entire uh grid or looping fractal i can now go ahead and mess around with the scale i think i'll take this down to about maybe uh, there or so okay and then under appearance i can go ahead and up the exposure this will make the undulations bigger and then I can drop the offset, which will lift them up a little bit higher. And you can just sort of play with these until you're happy with them, okay? And yeah, I mean, that looks pretty good. Let's go with that. All right, so now we can go ahead and unpin that. I wanna add a few more little things to the looping grid. Let's start by adding a tint effect and we'll just drop that in here. If I open up the properties of this, you can see that I can, 100% map the white to whatever color I want. So if I want a light blue, I can make a light blue. If I want a green, I can make a green. I can even select a color in here like 
that lovely shade of pink. But I think what I will do is go ahead and just make it a light blue for this demonstration. And then I think I will add a glow effect. So we'll just drop that in here. And again, you don't want to go too far with a glow, but you know, you do want it to look nice. So let me just up this slightly, maybe like that, turning it on and off. You can see there's a little bit of glow. I like it. And then the last thing I like to add is a scan lines effect. Dropping this on, what you can do is uh, you can adjust these frequencies and whatnot. But what I like to do is just shift the angle a little bit, you know, just slightly so that it is slightly off and it wouldn't normally look like that. But man, does it make it look good here in the uh, HUD style effect. Now you could place that within your uh, shot, wherever your HUD is, whether it's uh, uh, attachable to your helmet or whether it's on a screen or control panel in your spaceship or something like that. I'm Jay Haynes for the Film Sensei YouTube channel. If you enjoyed this video, please do me a favor and like the video, subscribe to the channel, click the little bell icon for notifications. If you have any comments or questions, leave them below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.